Hello folks, I'm Esther. I'm Nick. And we're Falchomatic Off Grid. Yep. We are a family of five who has lived for three and a half years off grid in a self-built 20 foot diameter yurt. Today we're gonna do a whole Q&A session devoted to questions we've received about our yurt and yurt living. And the big question, if we had it all to do again, would we make the same choices? First question, here's a little shout out to another off-grid YouTube channel, Pure Living for Life. I wrote this on our Facebook page. Definitely cost to build it. Why you picked a yurt over say a large enough trailer, travel trailer for your family. There are five of us. And how much pre-work you had to do to make the yurt comfortable. So let's hit this important question, cost to build it. Uh, we you know going into it we had budgeted about a thousand dollars to build it which was modest and it was gonna it was gonna work mostly uh, but we made a couple of decisions along the way that um, that uh, that made us go over that budget by roughly 100 percent so uh, we ended up at about two thousand dollars to build our yurt so that's the platform and its foundation the yurt itself with the framework, the interior skin, the insulation, the exterior skin, uh, you know, all the rafters and the ring that it goes into, all of the rigging that holds it all together. Um, and then that even includes the wood stove and stove pipe. Um, that's pretty and much it. And the kitchen it. counter? Uh, yeah, kitchen counter. I mean, so much of it was built out of materials that were free or very, very cheap. And that's how we kept the cost down uh, so much. So like in the case of the kitchen counter, that was all stuff that I scavenged. That was a, a zero cost uh, project, you know, other than my time. But, you know, the time is the thing that I replace money with. That's the way we like to do it. So about, uh, about $2,000 and that makes a livable uh, space right it's just a space though I mean it's it's a comfortable space but it's just a room we do not have any separations of separate rooms and there is not an indoor bathroom there isn't right. even a separate kitchen area because although there is a nice kitchen counter an area that we use as our kitchen it is not separated from the room at all right and so that's that's mainly the food prep area that and then we do all of the cooking and there's a sink outside so the the deck that's out in front as you can probably see um is definitely included as part of the usable space uh, but it is outside of the yurt so why did we pick a yurt over say a large enough travel trailer for your family yeah i would say um well a couple of reasons cost is one is one of them i think we would be hard pressed to find a, a decent sized travel trailer for $2,000. Um, you know, we might find something, but um, a, as I'm well versed in, in uh, wood and fabric and not so much mechanics, I think that, um, uh, I think this was the, the right way to go to us. You know, we sort of gravitate towards our comfort zones. And we actually had a trailer offered to us our first winter, Some very kind folks not too far away from us thought oh you shouldn't live like that and they offered us a trailer for the for the winter and i i actually don't remember the exact size of it or anything but we did have that as an option and we preferred the yurt absolutely i think to some extent it's also a style choice the round space has a better feeling to me it feels more like it's under our control and it's a free space and we can design it how we like um yeah, I mean, we sort of, even as uh, as we're finding out in the house, we sort of gravitate towards open design where it's it's an empty space and you just sort of carve out different spaces within it. Um, that was part of the appeal to me of the yurt is that that's, you know, it's 314 square feet of total usable space. Whereas in a travel trailer, you're really, you're just locked into where all those things are and i think we would have really stumbled over each other 
a lot more than we even do now uh, in a trailer. And we just wouldn't have had the pleasure of building it ourselves. I mean, a lot of what our whole homesteading journey is about is self-expression and the capacity to live a life that's based in creativity and self-expression so that Nick can use his skills to make something that then is our home, is our life, and he made it the way he likes it, the way we like it. That, that's, it's just our style to go that way right. rather than with a prefab kind of solution. Absolutely. Uh, how much pre-work you had to do to make the yurt comfortable? Um, well, there was a lot of planning that went into it, and uh, you know, we uh, we even drew out. You know, in in the drawings, we even placed furniture, uh, the bed and the bunk beds, and where the kitchen's going to be, and where the stove was going to go, and we had that all planned out. And to this day, it pretty much sits exactly like that. Yeah. So um, we put a lot of thought into. Um, for one, how to build it, obviously, and then, you know, even how we're going to use the space. All right, let's keep going. Have you ever had an issue with bugs or critters getting inside? Um, only once. Yes. We had one a, time. We had a little garter snake. We had a garter get snake in get one in. One time. Um, and to this day, it is it is unsettled whether it got through uh, a little. A little gap that was left between the vinyl and the door frame or if it just made its way in the door but in any case uh, I, I had to grab the snake and chuck it out and then uh, and also fill any possible gaps yeah that was that was a long conversation from my point of view I kept saying but honey the snake found a hole he kept saying, I don't see a hole. I kept saying, the snake found a hole. So I just filled some stuff. <laughs> uh. and, the, and to my credit, at that point, Sadie was on the floor. Sure. She was not walking yet. So no, I had a baby on the there. floor. She would have picked the snake up and tried to put it in her mouth, you know? And yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it's, it is uh, tighter than a lot of stick-built homes. You know, the the fabric seals right down to the to the deck and and hugs everything really tight and uh, those little spots around the around the door frame were the only thing that um, was a little mysterious like how everything's gonna tuck and actually um, you know make it all tight um, but as far as bugs it hasn't been bad you know I expected to see um, uh, I don't know like a year in I I sent a vacuum hose up in the in the space between the two um, uh, insulation layers in the roof, and I expected to be pulling out, you know, spider webs and all sorts of crazy stuff, and it was pretty much clean in there. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had a whole lot of, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary as far as spiders or ants or, or any of that. But we've also discussed before that we live in a climate that just is not that bug friendly. So, right. and we have, a, I mean, we have occasionally, didn't you pick a critic, a cricket up off of the, the rail the other night? Inside? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I think bugs do occasionally come in. It's not like a suburban home in that sense. Right, but f just like a, just like a house, they come in through, through the door. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, the, the, we're not especially vulnerable to, uh, to critters. Right. We've only ever had one mouse in there, and uh, it was during the summer, um, and the door was left wide open. So, yeah, so that's but very likely how that happened. Right. Okay, is the yurt fairly all airtight, and how well does it handle stress? Handle stress. No, nah, let's let's come back to that one because okay. there's some more specific ones. Oh, is, sure. Is the I yurt see. is the yurt fairly airtight? The yurt is it's really airtight. Um, uh, almost a little too much so so um, we we have you know in our first year we we made just a couple little adjustments to help uh, ventilation during the winter mm -hmm. okay so yeah transitioning I've got to give some, a shout out to Joanna Huffman here because she hit our weak point humidity issues question mark issues with mold mildew did you use a vapor barrier this is important so right so when you think about a vapor barrier the whole thing is a vapor barrier i mean it's it's vinyl coated polyester so it is completely waterproof um there's nothing passing in or out and so that's a problem too because it's not a vapor retarder which is able to 
you know, uh, let moisture out. We live in such a dry climate that like summertime humidity uh, is not really an issue at all. What we deal with is our own uh, um, aspiration, right? The, the, the moisture that comes from living things being inside a sealed space and, um, and the, the difference between the inside temperature and the outside temperature. So all of that is to say, in the winter, we get a little bit of condensation right around, like at the floor, um, on the on the cover, um, and that does. Uh, and if you leave it, uh, it can mold. So the one design thing that I would change about it is I think I would let I would go ahead and let air move move up through that and not seal it quite as tight to the platform. And another way to solve that would be to have heat more evenly distributed. So sure. we have the stove on one side of the yurt, which works great floor plan wise. But that humidity issue in the wintertime occurs on the arc, the 180 degrees opposite the stove, and particularly behind things. So it's, there's a particular place that we have to clean with bleach a couple times, maybe once a month in the wintertime to make sure that we're not growing mold because it's right underneath the kid's bed which is a, floor plan wise is across the yurt directly from the, opposite yeah. the furthest away from the heat source right um, and so this is another I don't know if this question got in but uh, about the floor being insulated the floor is uninsulated mm -hmm. and I think if we had insulated the deck then we would have less of, that would be less of a cold spot right where the the side meets the floor yeah that, actually this is this is a question oh just this what would you do differently so I think that's insulating think the floor. Insulating the floor and uh, trying to solve that, that little condensation problem. Yeah. All right, let's talk about maintenance. What, how much maintenance have we had to do to the yurt in three and a half years? Um, no real maintenance issues. The vinyl, uh, when I bought it, they said it was good for uh, 20 years, and that's mostly just um, taking into account the UV protection on it. So it's good to be out in the sunlight for 20 years. So awesome. Um, I have fixed the doorknob um, at least twice a year, every year. Um, a, couple of, a couple of things uh, factor into that. Um, one is that I don't get new doorknobs. I get the ones for a dollar out of the bin at the restore or you know off of my latest uh, little remodel project or whatever so i'm always working with used probably um you know junky stuff but then also uh our kitchen is outside and that door gets more cycles per day than any door ever should really so it's a high traffic door and uh, i use junky parts and we don't have to tell you that because you can hear the door going behind us right. while we're doing this video. Um, okay, if you had hobbies that you that took space before, for example, I do a lot of yarn art and my husband has a wood shop. Did you downsize or come up with creative storage? Did you have to give any hobbies up? Hmm. Um, well, we we don't listen to records. No, we don't listen to records. That's we true. used to do that. Our photograph um, and our record. Right. Um, you know, well, one thing about us is we've never owned property before this. So we were all always apartment dwellers. So I've never had a shop at home. Um, we have had things that, you know, projects that kind of spread out and whatnot. But um, I don't know, you know, the, the whole place is kind of the, uh, the outlet for that now. That's what I was going to say. I, I kept this question and wanted to answer it because it's so interesting to talk about hobbies when it's our goal to merge a joyful life, intentional life, and a practical life. Right, We're really there, trying to squish all those things together. There's not the work life and then the pleasure life. We're just trying to mash them all together. But with that said, we certainly have had to give things up. We haven't had a sewing machine in the yurt except for, you know, when we bring it in to do a particular project. Right. Um, and 
we've definitely missed that. And even my food preservation. I mean, it's funny because you, you fall in love with certain homesteading skills when you have access to, for example, electricity and a certain amount of space and you're able to, to engage these activities. Um, my first year here, I, I didn't can anything. Oh no, that's true. We did the Concord grape jelly. That's right. But but it was very little, and and we didn't have a place to put it, and we we I wasn't that good on the wood stove yet, so it definitely was this funny backwards slide from a lot of skills that I had that I had established um, as as hobbies when we were living in a you know it was an apartment life, but a suburban apartment life. Um, to come here we really did have to cut back but now we're getting to a place where we're making a spot for this and a spot for that and in the mountain dream home we should have the sewing machine set up again so we're pretty excited about all of that yeah and a wood shop eventually eventually a wood shop okay have you ever had any heavy snows problems with the weight of the snow on the yurt uh, so back to back to yurt construction and yurt living issues yeah, so we've had heavy snows, you know, a, a foot over 24 hours. That's happened a couple times since we've been here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the it had it's able to take quite the load. I'm no engineer, so I couldn't put a number to it. But um, it has always stood up to a snowfall like that. Um, the thing about um, you know heating the interior and having a fairly uh, low R value um, insulation is that we have a lot of heat loss out of the roof. So if you have a lot of heat loss, then you're going to be melting that snow and it's going to slide off. So um, it's not going to accumulate, you know, two and three and four feet of snow like it does on the ground over the course of the winter. So we only have to worry about a heavy snowfall in a short amount of time. And I guess a couple of times I've gotten a broom up there and, and pushed snow off because it wasn't moving on its own. Um, but it's really a pretty robust structure. Uh, when putting it together, I, I'm able to crawl around on the roof and sit on the very top of it and, you know, um, and uh, really no problems. Yeah, yeah. Next. Yes. If you had to do it over, would you still choose a yurt for temporary living quarters? And if so, would you have gone bigger or smaller? Would you do it again? Yes. Definitively, yes. I'm having trouble leaving the yurt even though what I'm moving to is so wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I just made him cry. I just made Nick cry. No, it's true. <laughs> it's, it's true. Here's the reason why we have to live the yurt, leave the yurt. We, it's not set up for our children to evolve into full human beings. You know, the process of going from being dependent to independent involves experimentation and having stuff and figuring out what you like and who you are. And we're just too close to each other for all of that. Especially Milo, is, he really loves stuff. And particularly his books and his comic books and his, his um, drawings. It's literally an avalanche. His bed is gonna come down at any minute because all he has is this little little space, and he's um he's really outgrowing. That has blood in it, and it doesn't hurt so much. Uh, I'm glad you're okay, honey. Can we have five more minutes? Yeah, We're almost done, baby. Go with be Stella. Okay, that's fine. Would you do it again? Um, yes. Yes, I would. I think the yurt was the right choice for all the reasons we said before. Um, and uh, it really was cost effective, was the best use of uh, my skills, and uh, was really just an, uh, it was a good, ex I think it was a good way for us to get into um, this, you know, just our new way of life mm -hmm. in that it was an exercise in frugality. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost, you know, uh, uh, a sport, you know, how little money we could spend on it and what I could get for free. And I had a whole pile of this and what in the hell am I going to do with all of it? But then it made its way in, you know, um, and really and made it happen. So uh, it was it was a good way for us to, to start out here. Now, Nick talked about things that he would do differently if he were constructing it. I have one thing that I never asked to have changed, 
um, but that if we were doing it over again, I would. And that is our system for covering the hole in the top. So he laughs because <laughs> I it's can't do it. It's ridiculous. It's, it's a, not user friendly. It is not user friendly. It's a it's a flap of vinyl that fits snugly right over the top, and it has a little cage that keeps it from collecting water. But it's just on ropes, and you just have to pull a. A cowboy move yeah. and flip the rope in just the right way, and the thing flips over. And, and if you flip it, it wrong, it gets upside down and it tangles. And tangles up. And then what and are you supposed mess. to do? Climb on top of the yurt? Right. When this has happened, when Nick is is not around or not available, that's been. It's, it's it just been stays some, open then. Well, it made me a little grumpy. Um, one one time, I actually put a bucket under it because it started raining, um, and I couldn't get the flap closed. So I just, that's all I could do. There are, mu there are much better solutions to covering the top of a yurt than what we have. Um, but we just went with simple and of course it was only going to be for a year or temporary or whatever. However um, long temporary is. Right. Um, so uh, maybe if I had to do it again or maybe as an improvement we could do something different. But um, uh, it worked out okay. But all these decisions that we've made are related to our circumstances. It becomes very precise when you're building your own everything. What bothers you and what doesn't. We don't live in a climate with a lot of rain. So in the winter time it's always covered and in the summertime it doesn't rain very often anyway. So that has actually has, has fit our situation pretty well except for those occasional times when, when it hasn't worked. Oh but I, I digress. Would you have gone bigger or smaller with the yurt? Oh, um, no, I think that, I think that this size, uh, is, is just about right for us. Mm -hmm. It was certainly enough when we started out. Um, as you go bigger, it becomes, uh, more of a, uh, a task to support the roof well. Uh, over 16 feet, I think the commercial yurts start to put vertical studs under each rafter and uh, much bigger than that they start to do center supports and things so for the open design I think I, I think the 20 footer is a good size mm -hmm. and I wouldn't wish for it to be bigger than it is it's been perfect for this moment and I do have hopes in 20 years or so we can move back in let one of our kids take the mountain dream home but of course I'm the one who's nostalgic for that 20 years, huh? 20 years. Are we still going to be here in 20 years? Yes. Are we going to be alive in 20 years? Oh. It's up for grabs. Last question. What was the hardest part of the experience? It's a great question. So let's say, what was the hardest part? Let's answer. What was the hardest part of living for three and a half years in a year? Hmm. Uh, I, I have one. Okay. Uh, the clutter. Uh, I'm not exactly a neat freak. I mean, I, I like things, you know, a certain way, I guess, but um, not everything spick and span, and I th I'm certainly really good at making messes. So, um, but in a tight space like that, it, with all your stuff in it, everything just has to, you know, you got to put stuff away. So I spend a lot of my time um, just putting things back where they go, and the kids, you know, get stuff out all over the place. Um, and we make a mess while we're cooking and things. It's just, um, it's just a constant battle with with the stuff. You can't just let it go. Like, you know, in in your house, you might have a sink full of dishes and then a bunch of dishes on the counter or whatever, and we just don't have it. It's like you got to put it right in its spot. And our kids are not minimalists, not yet anyway. No, like their parents are. I mean, that issue is that almost the same issue as just having too many people and too much life in a small space. Um, because if it were just the two of us, I think we'd manage that kind of minimalist lifestyle of putting things back exactly where it goes pretty well because we're similar in that. We're not, we're not incredibly tidy, but we both respond to our environment. We like it when things feel nice, when things are put away, when there's kind of an aesthetic balance in a room that matters to both of us. So I think if it were just us, we'd be fine. <laughs> Which brings me back to this plan of moving back to the yurt later. <laughs> right. Anything else? 
Um, not for me. What was the hardest part for you? Oh, I have to answer the question. Um, the hardest part for me has been winter days when Nick is up at the house or working somewhere on the property having his alone time and I've got three kids running the circle in the yurt around the table and you know I'm trying to read C.S. Lewis to them to calm them down or whatever else and I'm reading very loudly in hopes that I can get them to quiet down and they're just running and cackling and then eventually they bump into each other and then we've really got a problem so stir crazy definitely comes to mind. Um, I, I love the yurt but it's definitely time for us to go on to the next thing. Stella, what's the hardest part of living in a yurt? Well, there are two equal ones. That I have to go outside to get to the bathroom. And that we live in a small space. Well, the timing's pretty good for that. It is. It is. So we're proud of our yurt. We're, we're pleased to be able to say that we expressed ourselves in this way and we set our goals and we were able to meet them. And it's been a, a great ride the last three and a half years. It's been a fun time. Absolutely. And if anybody wants one, um, I'd love to make another one. Well, How's there you that? go. There's an interesting idea. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today for our Q&A. And feel free to uh, submit questions for future Q&A sessions, either by email. I'll put the email in the info box or in comments below. We are grateful that you hang out with all of us. We wish you well in all of your journeys and paths and projects. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> Ooh, good.